This kind of awesome and eye-catching transition is known as a seamless transition where two video clips smoothly blend together to appear as a single clip. Let's see how we can easily create this transition in DaVinci Resolve. Photo selection is important for a seamless transition, especially in camera seamless transitions, where most of the work is done during the shooting process. Now you can see two video clips on the timeline. If I play back the videos, you'll notice that both videos start playing slowly at the beginning and gradually spread up toward the end. We match the high speed and blurred areas of both videos to create a seamless transition, making it appear as if there are a single continuous clip. First, we need to make precise cuts in both video clips to extract the best portions of the footage. To do this, drag the time indicator to the ending area of the first video and find a suitable frame where you can make a cut. Then move the time indicator to the beginning and remove the extra portion of the video that we don't need. Repeat the same process for the second video, as selecting the best parts is crucial for transitions, effects, or anything that makes your final project engaging. At the end of the second video, choose a frame as the last one, as it may blend well with the ending portion of the first video. Now join these two videos together, after that play through them with a the time indicator to observe the transition. Although the transition is not ready yet, you might notice the blurred areas at the end of both videos. To complete the transition, we need to bring the blurred or invisible area of the second video from the end to the beginning. To do this, right click on the second video and select change clip speed. A dialog box will appear for adjustments. Check the reverse speed options and confirm the new settings by clicking the change button. Now the second video will play in reverse, meaning the ending portion has become the beginning. By making this simple change to the second video clip, we have essentially connected the high speed motion blur areas of two videos. Let's play back the videos or transition on second to see how it looks after applying these changes. It's better now, but this seamless transition is still in its earlier stages. For some clips, this kind of simple adjustment might be enough to complete the transition. However, for this transition, we need to make additional adjustments to perfect it. To do this, right click on the second footage and select Retime Controls. You will notice play icons at the top of the footage and the speed percentage at the bottom, which is currently set to 100%. Next, drag the time indicator slowly to the right until the motion blur ends and set a keyframe. To do this, click on the drop down icon on the speed menu and select Add Speed Point to create a keyframe at the position of the time indicator. By adding this keyframe, we can now adjust the speed of the video independently on either side of the keyframe. You see that both sides of this speed are currently set to 100%. To modify the speed of the beginning portion of the video, click the drop down arrow next to the speed percentage. Go to speed and adjust it to 200% or 400% depending on the video. For example, I have set it to 200% which is now reflected in the speed display. Let's play the video to see how it looks after making the changes. It's now playing much faster at the beginning since the speed has been increased. But it's not smooth enough yet. To improve its smoothness, we need to adjust the curve line. Right click on the footage again and select Retime Curve. If you can't see the curve line, scroll the mouse wheel on the video to reveal it. You can also click and drag the time indicator panel upward to enlarge the workspace, making the curve adjustments easier. In the graph editor, if the curve line is not visible, it may be because the retime speed option is not enabled. Click the drop down menu in the retime speed section to activate. Once visible, you'll notice that the curve line is currently linear, which gives it a hard appearance. The left side of the curve line before the keyframe represents the 200% speed, while the right side of the line shows 100% speed. To smooth out this transition, first select the keyframe point. By default, it's set to linear. Change this to is in or is out. After making this change, the curve will transform into an S-shaped speed ramp with adjustable handlebars. You can drag these handlebars left or right to adjust the speed ramp. If you want to increase or decrease the speed, grab the curve line and drag it up or down. For example, I adjusted the speed to approximately 225% on the left side. While the right side remains at 100%, however, if you adjust the ramp area and drag it up or down, it will affect the speed on the right side as well. Be cautious when making changes as it can impact the overall flow of the video. If you make a mistake, you can easily undo it by hitting Ctrl plus J. This method allows you to adjust the speed ramp effectively, creating smoother transitions for your project.
Let's play the video once again to see the updated transition after making changes to the speed. It's now slightly better but since we have not made any adjustments to the first video yet. It's time to do it. To adjust the first video clip right click on it and select Retime Controls. Move the time indicator to the ending part of the video where the motion blur and high speed area begin. Once you confirm the position of the time indicator, click the down arrow icon next to the speed percentage and select Add Speed Point to set a point on the video. Adding this keyframe gives us the ability to to adjust the speed of each segment independently. Next click on the right side of the speed point and select change the speed. Then set the speed to 200%. Now left side of the video remains at 100% speed while the right side is at 200%. To adjust the retime curve, right click on the first video and select retime curve. In the curve editor, the left side of the line before the point represents 100% speed while the right side after the point shows 200% speed. With no speed ramp applied yet. To create a speed ramp, ensure the keyframe or speed point is selected. Then click on the is in or is out icon to add a smooth ramp at the keyframe. Use the handlebars to adjust the curve and smooth the transition according to your preference. If needed, you can also modify the speed at the end of the line for a better seamless transition. Finally, join two video clips together again to complete the transition. Play back the video to see the final result. Now the transition looks truly seamless with no noticeable joining point between two videos. By adding a seamless sound effects, you can make your transition even more engaging. I already have a seamless sound effects in the media pool. If you would like to learn more about seamless sound effects and how to manage them, check out the tutorial linked in the description below. Now let's grab and drag the sound effects onto the timeline and place it on the audio track, aligning it with the transition. That's all for today's DaVinci Resolve tutorial on creating seamless transitions. There is also a version of this tutorial available for Premiere Pro. If you are a Premiere Pro fan, be sure to watch the video linked in the description. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I'll see you in the next video.